This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. What I'm looking at is the Lodge. This is my second review. My first review was less of a review than a brief synopsis of the movie and why I enjoyed it as much as I did. It's a great movie, by the way. This time around, I want to talk about the themes behind this movie and what made it so good. As I said with my first review, I don't think this is a supernatural movie. It has a facade of a supernatural movie. It's directed with such care and technique that you could even call it a supernatural movie. It is not a supernatural movie. In fact, there is nothing supernatural about this movie. It's more akin to if the filmmakers were less skilled, a movie of the week, to be totally honest with you, in the sense that this movie is about neglect. Neglect that destroys people. And let me explain what I mean. Lodge is not a supernatural movie. There is evil at the heart of it. And as I said, that evil is that of neglect. And its perpetrator isn't Satan. It isn't Riley or Mia. It's not even Grace, but it's Richard, the father. The movie opens within a dollhouse. You don't know it's a dollhouse, but that's important because it's the point of reference from which the entire movie works from. Everything emanates from that one point. It's literally the heart of the movie. The movie revolves around structures a lot, be it the dollhouse or the house that the Hall family actually lives in, which is a gorgeous house. But why is it a gorgeous house? Because their father, Richard, works really hard to get it. He's paid well, but his work has a cost. Namely, he neglects his family. How do I know he neglects his family? Because he's not only splitting up with his wife, which happens, but she kills herself while visiting him. And apparently, he had no clue that that was going to happen. That's actually understandable. What isn't is that he didn't know that his wife was in such a state. Now, they had apparently divorced. I don't know if they divorced. I know they're not together, though, because he tells her that he's going to remarry. You don't know if they're actually divorced. I think they're not, and they're probably just separated. In any case, he doesn't know what her state of mind was at all. Now, that's a problem. So the thing is, the children clearly side with the mother in this instance to such a degree that they come to blame the father for what happened to the mother and believe that Grace, the woman their father is going to marry, is crazy. And they go about proving it. Now this is where the neglect is really crucial, by the way. The clue of what they're doing is out in the open the dollhouse. They don't hide what their plan was. They literally had figures within the dollhouse hung. What Aiden tried to do to make Grace think she was going insane. This is happening all around Richard. In fact, let's look at Grace for a second. Grace was a member of a cult that killed themselves, like Reverend Jim Jones in Georgetown. I don't know if he was unaware of that part of her life or just chose to not pay attention to it, but he never acknowledged it at all. And that's a problem because there are so many things that this man ignores. He ignores the state his wife is in, which doesn't necessarily cause her to kill herself, but doesn't help either. He ignores the state his children are in, which leave them to come up with a plot, a very clever plot, by the way, to make Grace think that she's crazy. Because unlike him, they are quite aware of her past and use it against her. And Grace herself, it seems that no one in this family communicates with each other. They just react as opposed to actually talk about what's going on in their minds. 
As a result, things just happen explosively in some instances. For instance, Grace's hold on reality is pretty tenuous at the best of times. She takes drugs to help alleviate the symptoms, but she is not the stablest of people. She doesn't respond to stress at the best of times. Take away her drugs and she's gonna crack. The children didn't know that. Nonetheless, well, the children did and didn't know that in the sense that Aiden was the leader behind the plot. And what he was trying to do was to, to destroy her mentally, to make Richard suffer as he and Mia suffered when their mother died. So he was trying to break her, her mind, and he did. But that's the thing. It shouldn't have been able to work. Why did it work? Because as usual, Richard was not there. Richard is the parent. Yet Richard is not only not there to support his wife to be, he's not there to support his children. He's not there to support his wife. Richard's definition of support is to provide a place to live, to be a friend, but not to be a father, not to be a husband. And this destroys his family and eventually destroys him because events are happening, unfolding all around him, and he's not there to diffuse situations. And as a result, situations get way out of hand to they literally destroy people. There is no devil. There is no evil in the lodge beyond that which is within people themselves. But that's the tragedy in some respects that makes this such a terrifying movie and such a tense psychological thriller. It's that everything that you see terrible that happens in this movie is, as I said, due to neglect. It's not due to necessarily anyone being particularly evil. In fact, what Aiden did, making Grace think that she were being haunted, would actually seem silly and childish if there were some force present to mediate it, some force present to call out Aiden on what he was doing. He's a child, remember. He doesn't know necessarily. All he wants to do is lash out because he's been neglected. He's been hurt. And the only thing he knows is to lash out at someone. And Grace is the invader. Grace is the thing he sees responsible for the upheaval, the pain in his life. So he lashes out. He attacks in the most insidiously clever way that he can. And when you really look at what he did, it's frankly silly. What isn't silly, though, is that it preyed upon the fears and doubts that already existed in Grace, coupled with her very real mental illness. And she collapsed mentally from the strain. Mia just went along with it. She didn't expect, neither did Aiden, honestly, expect things to go as they did. But once again, these are children. Grace is an unstable person. The strongest person in this movie is Richard. But the problem with Richard is he is not available for his family. He neglects them at every turn. As I already said, he neglected his wife. See what happened. He neglected his children. See what happened. He neglected Grace. See what happens. The Lodge is such a great movie because it's a very human movie. It's neglect taken to extremes, essentially. And it's so subtly done by the directors that I could actually see an argument calling this movie supernatural. I don't think it makes any sense based on a film, but it's a plausible argument if you look at it from certain angles. That's the sign of a true master filmmaker in my view. Namely, their work can be taken at various interpretations depending on where you stand. And that's why The Lodge is one of the best psychological thrillers in years and a true masterwork. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review.